let's talk about five things to avoid when buying a condo. Maybe you're thinking about jumping into the San Francisco real estate market, but you can't quite afford that single family home. Or maybe you're just looking for an amenity rich building experience. Well, if you're thinking about buying a condo in San Francisco, we work with people like you every single day. I'm Ruth Christian. I'm one of the top agents in San Francisco, and we're here to help you figure out the five pitfalls of buying a condo in San Francisco. Additionally, I'm gonna take you through two different condos and two very different price points. One in South Beach, which is about a $2.5 million condo, and another one in North Beach at about the $1.3 million price point. So you can see exactly what condos look like here in the city. So come on, take a look, and I'm gonna show you some of the pitfalls. So pitfall number one, waiting for prices to go even lower. Have you ever found yourself saying, I wish I would have bought five years ago? Well, now's your chance. I'm gonna step on over to the waterfront and tell you a little bit more about the prices on condos in the downtown and Soma area. Let's talk a little bit about the condo market. The condo prices in Soma, South Beach, downtown, they have dropped significantly. Currently, they're showing that they're around 2014 price levels, while the rest of the city is somewhere between 2017 and 2018 price points. So that actually makes it a really prime time to buy a condo. So historically, condos have actually appreciated quite well, though it might not feel like it if you're a seller trying to sell something that you bought five years ago. Since the pandemic, condo prices are down about 8%. Since 2015, they're actually up 9%. And if you go back to the financial crisis, they're actually up 73%. And if you go all the way back to 2000, they're up over 170%. So long-term wise, condos have done well. And if you're buying in at the bottom, then there's only one way for those to go up, we hope. We actually believe that San Francisco is going to really revitalize the downtown. AI is moving in and that's gonna all happen right here. So we think that prices are going to come up. Additionally, we're seeing that with commercial spaces and the vacancy being up about 60%, that rents have come down a lot on commercial, and this is actually opening up opportunities for other businesses that wouldn't have otherwise been able to afford downtown to be right here, downtown where all the action is. There is a ton to love about these areas. This area actually enjoys some of the best weather in the city. Today is an unusual 80 degrees in San Francisco, but the weather here is almost always nice. In addition to weather, you have some really picturesque views. I love the feeling of being surrounded by condo buildings. It makes me feel like there's a tremendous amount of opportunity around me everywhere. Also, it's extremely convenient to live here. There's a lot of public transportation. A lot of the people who buy here also live here so they can just walk to work or they can jump on the train or jump on the freeway and head to the South Bay. So it's really easy to get around. So what does it cost? So condos vary. If you're buying in a new construction building that was just built, the fees are gonna be anywhere between like $1,500 a square foot all the way up to $2,500 a square foot, depending on the level of finishes and exactly how new it is. Some of the older buildings do cost less and the average price per square foot for last year in Soma was actually only $830 a square foot. So next up, I'm gonna take you over to the Lumina. We're gonna meet my business partner, Yesenia, and she's gonna walk us through one of the units that we have there. Let's go check it out. Hey, Ryan. Hi. Let's start with these views. Oh my God. Yes, well, these views are definitely the highlight of the unit. You have 180 degree views. You can literally see it almost all in this unit. Obviously, the highlight is the Bay Bridge, bay and water views there. You've got Alcatraz, Angel Island, peeking through these buildings here. Salesforce Tower, so you get a cityscape view on this side. And it's so nice to have a little bit of it outdoor is, space yeah. and this like, you know, high rise. Yeah, so exactly. Pop out here. Yeah. And South Beach, as you know, is like a warmer part of town. So you actually do get to get outside and use this. So Yesenia, 
that, I know that one of the big differences between say like a 1.2, 1.3 million dollar condo and a 2.5 luxury build, a lot of it is about the finishes. I see right. a Gagano oven here. What else have we got going yeah, on? Yeah, definitely. So it's all about the finishes. So you've got marble countertops here, cymatic cabinetry throughout, beautiful hardwood floors throughout. And the other thing I noticed standing in here with all of the hustling bustling outside, it's quiet. Yes. Yeah. So I think the build level is very right. different with the concrete construction, whereas a lot of the low-rise buildings are just allowed to be timber and basically there's not a lot of soundproofing mm -hmm. between the floors, right. the yeah. windows, the walls, all That's of that. right. So the building is built with all concrete and steel, so really, really reduces any noise transfer between units. You literally don't hear your neighbors. So you've got two bedrooms, two bathrooms, about 1,500 square feet. That's right. Yeah. Out $1,300 for HOA, that seems low. Yeah, it's actually fairly low in comparison to buildings in the area. And it's one of the buildings that's most amenity rich. There's not an amenity here that you don't have. You can have a Pilates instructor come by. There's a private studio for that. Several game rooms, several movie rooms. There was a kid's music room here and the valet is spectacular. I always joke that you have to have a really sexy car to live here because if you go down there, it's like a Porsche dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. And the best amenity is Woodlands Market downstairs. Amazing. Yeah, when I said the, the fees were low, I meant for what you get. Exactly. Clearly, yeah. You can get lower fees, but to have all of those things for 1300 I right? feel like it's yeah. because there's so many units here. That's that right. So that brings me to our second point. Let's talk about the fees. The fees in these high rise buildings can vary a lot. One of the fees that can really catch buyers off guard is a Melarus fee. So the Melarus is actually a tax that is passed on to, in this case, actually the buyer. Um, it was put into place in order to help develop the area around the condo. The Melarus on a building like Avery, for example, is going to be about $15,000. So it's about $10 per square foot. And so that can really catch you off guard. Another fee is transfer tax fee. And the transfer tax fee can be an additional $15,000, $20,000 that the buyer is taking on. Now, a lot of these fees can be negotiated into the contract. So making sure that you have a real estate agent that's really looking out for you, explaining the fees, and also help you negotiate those fees down is really important. Lastly, the fee that most commonly people think about is going to be the HOA fee. The HOA fee can also vary dramatically, anywhere from as low as $350 all the way up to $5,000, if you can believe that or not. Now, what makes an HOA fee be $300 or $5,000? So if you have a fee that's $300, then what you're probably gonna be looking at is a building where the sellers actually didn't take into consideration building any sort of reserve. And a reserve is something that's gonna be in place where if something comes up in a building, there's money in place in order to pay for the thing that came up. So with a $300 HOA fee, you're probably just looking at covering things like insurance, maybe some garbage, and that's about it. Now, what do you get in a $5,000 fee? So what you would get is you'd get really white glove, concierge service. Um, they'll call you by your name when you walk in, make you feel really special. I love that. Um, you would, if you had groceries delivered, they would go put them into your refrigerator. Um, they will take care of your dry cleaning. They will wash your car. So you actually get a lot of amenities. Whereas in a building that tries to have all those amenities but only has 40 units, you're gonna get a much higher fee in order to cover those. So these are a few things that you wanna look out for when evaluating the cost of a building. to show you a very different price point. This is a two bedroom, two bath. We're here in the north waterfront side of San Francisco. And this building was built in 1993. So it's a little bit older construction. As you can see, it's actually been nicely updated by the current owner. There's newer hardwood floors, a newer kitchen, newer bath. But the building itself is more dated than the Lumina. And then also the construction is going to be different. 
Oddly enough, the HOA dues are exactly the same amount. And remember when I told you that the bigger the building is, the more that you get because you're pulling your money. So in this building, there's just about 100 units versus about 650 at the Lumina. So in the Lumina, you're getting a lot more in terms of amenities. Here, you're getting earthquake insurance, which believe it or not, in San Francisco is pretty rare. Also, unlike some buildings that have lower HOA fees, this building has great reserves, which means that if something comes up for maintenance, you're probably not getting a special assessment. But let's take a look. We're looking at very different price points here. We're looking at a price point difference of over a million dollars. So there really is a price point for everyone. If you can't afford that 2.5, then this is a lovely place and also an amazing area of town. So this is the primary suite and we have a nice suite. As you can see, you have a little tiny balcony here, very different views, right? At the Lumina, you have high rise views here. You don't really have views for this price point. You've got an open floor plan concept, which is very, very popular. You have the ability to entertain all of your friends with an open space. And then I actually really love this layout where you have bedrooms on different sides. So obviously in San Francisco, we have all different kinds of inventory. I only showed you two today, but if you ever wanna get out and see some more inventory, maybe see some of those older eclectic Victorian or Edwardians, just give us a call. We'd be happy to help you out. The third pitfall is not understanding the contract and the disclosures. So the difference between buying a new development building and just a regular old condo or a single family home in San Francisco is that the contract is written by the developer for the developer. So in a lot of cases, like the developer doesn't have to do things on time, but if the client doesn't do things on time, then they're penalized. Right? That's how the Melarus tax got pushed into there, is that the developer just decided to pass it on in their contract. The other thing is the disclosure packages sometimes are huge. You're talking about five, 600 pages. So you're definitely gonna wanna work with a qualified professional to help you sift through those things, understanding the things in the contract that might come up. In a lot of these older buildings, some of the buildings that were built in the early 1900s, they actually have a lot of maintenance coming due. And so they might have HOA fees that are in the say thousand dollar range, but then once a year or so, they have a history of every year for five years, having a $20,000 special assessment to do major projects on the building. So these are the kind of things that you wanna look out for in the disclosure package. Now we're at number four, and we're gonna talk about noise issues. There's a difference in construction in terms of when it was built and how it was built, and that's gonna affect noise substantially. If you're looking at a condo that was built in the early 1900s, then maybe you wanna be on the top floor so that you don't have somebody walking over you. There's definitely gonna be more noise transfer issues in buildings like that. However, if you're looking in a concrete and steel building where the floors between are concrete and the windows are really solid, the noise isn't gonna be that much of an issue. Depending on where your location is, noise can also be a factor. If you're in one of those timber buildings and you're located on Bush or Van Ness, the streets are gonna be very noisy. Now, if you're on a street that has timed lights, that's gonna be an even noisier equation for you versus having stop lights because a timed light, you can just have a motorcycle zooming through there, making a lot of noise. So noise is another factor to look out for. Number five is timing during a downturn. Now, the condo market has actually been hit much harder than the single family home market in the last two downturns. So depending on when you wanna sell, if you end up wanting to sell whenever there's a downturn and you just bought in the last couple of years, then you could find yourself in a place where you're losing money. And that can be very painful and it can also make you wanna stay longer than necessary. So it kind of messes with your ability to move on with your life. Single family homes do appreciate better than condos. And it's just one simple rule of supply and demand that makes that happen. San Francisco is only a seven by seven area. 
and there's not really a whole lot of land left. So typically for new houses, they're just old houses that have been torn down and rebuilt or built down to the studs. There's not a lot of land left. So a single family home is going to hold value better. As I mentioned to you earlier, the appreciation on condos has been good long-term, but in the short term, if you end up wanting to move sooner, you might find yourself not having the flexibility that you wish you had. Lastly, I wanna wrap it up with some opportunities. So there is a tremendous ability to get lower prices right now and negotiate all kinds of things. And we love negotiating. We actually had the ability earlier this year to get a client into contract on something that was priced at $5.6 million and we got it for her for $4.2 million. I can't promise you that big of a gap, but we have multiple stories where we've been able to negotiate really, really stellar deals. So I think it's a great time to get in at an already low price and try to get it even lower. Additionally, a lot of the buyers that we're working with right now are first time buyers because they don't have to give up a low interest mortgage in order to buy a new place. So if you don't currently own a house, you are paying a mortgage, you're just paying someone else's mortgage. So the average cost to rent in San Francisco is like four or $5,000 for, you know, kind of a very, very average small two bedroom. If you're paying $5,000 a month in rent, $60,000 a year, over a few years span, that quickly adds up to $300,000, which you could put into equity in a home. So if you wanna think about investing in your own mortgage instead of somebody else's, we'd love to be a sounding board for you. If you'd like to find out more about what it's like to live in the South Beach area or the North Beach area or any area in San Francisco, please check out our videos for more information. Also, if you liked this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and send it to your friends. Also, feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all via text, email. We'd love to chat with you and we'd love to help you make that smooth move to San Francisco.